and I wanted to do research. If they gave me a first, I would go to Cambridge. If I only got a second, I would stay in Oxford. <laughs> <laughs> I was 20 in October 1962 when I arrived in Cambridge at DAMTP, the Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics. I had applied to work with Fred Hoyle the most famous British astronomer of the time. I say astronomer because cosmology then was partly recognized as a legitimate field. However, Hoyle had enough students already, so to my great disappointment, I was assigned to Dennis Sharma, of whom I had not heard. But it was just as well I hadn't been a student of Hoyle, because I would have been drawn into defending his steady-state theory, a task which would have been harder than saving the Euro. <laughs> I hadn't done much mathematics in the very easy physics course at Oxford, so Sharma suggested I work on astrophysics. But having been cheated out of working with Hoyle, I wasn't going to do something boring like Faraday rotation. <coughs> I had come to Cambridge to do cosmology, and cosmology I was determined to do. <coughs> At that time, cosmology and gravitation were neglected fields that were right for development. <coughs> so I read old textbooks on general relativity and traveled up to dear relativity lectures at King's College, <coughs> London, each week. I followed the words and equations, but I didn't really get a good feel for the subject. At that time, it became clear something was not quite right with me. Already in Oxford, I had noticed that I could no longer row a spelling boat properly. The Christmas after arriving in Cambridge, I went home. It was a very cold winter and my mother persuaded me to go skating on the lake in St. Albans even though I knew I was not up to it. I fell over and had great difficulty getting up again. My mother realized something was wrong and took me to the doctor. <coughs> I spent weeks in Bart's hospital and had many tests. They never actually told me what was wrong but I guessed enough to know it was pretty bad, so I didn't want to ask. In fact, the doctor who diagnosed me washed his hands of me, and I never saw them again. He felt that there was nothing that could be done. In effect, my father became my doctor, and it was to him that I turned for advice. At first I became depressed. I seemed to, to be getting worse pretty rapidly. There didn't seem any point working on my PhD because I didn't know if I would live long <coughs> enough to finish it. But then the condition developed more slowly and I began to make progress in my work. After my expectations had been reduced to zero, every new day became a bonus, and I began to appreciate everything I did have. While there's life, there is hope. 
And there was also a young woman called Kay, whom I had met at a party. Getting engaged lifted my spirits, and I realized if we were going to get married, I had to get a job and finish my PhD. I began to work hard and I enjoyed it.